If you've played a fighting game in the last 10 years from the East, you've heard this sound before. I got you. Or you heard another one that sounded like this. If not those, then you've definitely heard some iteration in between. But why is that sound so consistent in these games? Where does it come from? And does every fighting game developer feel contractually obligated to include it? Well, kinda. Fighting games take a lot from the things those said designers and directors saw while growing up. The manga they'd read, the movies they'd watch, and the anime they'd tune into every week. This media became an inspiration that sparked the creative minds of designers, producers, and directors who were looking to create worlds that players could lose themselves in and experiences nobody had ever seen before. The 80s in Japan were an insane time for these kids growing up. Manga like Fist of the North Star were influencing kids and teens, video games like Mario and Pac-Man were sucking up quarters at the arcades, and movies like Police Story were showing off that doing cool flips and tricks could be your entire career. The possibilities must have seemed endless. So for the creators of fighting games, it was a perfect time to mold all of these things into one. A time to bundle all their inspirations into dream projects that would set in motion a cycle that would turn for decades. The first part of the cycle is what they had available to them before anything else. What they could see around them. Part 1. Perception In any cycle of inspiration, it's gotta start with something to draw from. An essence, a message, an aesthetic, whatever. And these designers had tons to take from. But before I get ahead of myself, we gotta get back to the sound. In case you forgot... Say the line, Bart! <laughs> yeah! The sound is originally from the Fist of the North Star anime, heard when its main character Kenshiro performs its signature move, the 100 Crack Fist. It's a larger-than-life attack in which hundreds of strikes are performed in a few seconds. The sounds reflect that speed with a high-pitched shout for every strike. For the sake of the video, we're going to call these shouts by their name, Kiai. It's like if you sped up those Bruce Lee shouts for every strike, and only heard the last one in real time for its emphasis. Oh wait, that's exactly what it's like. In an interview with Tetsuo Ohara, the animator of the series, he says this, When I was young, I was a fan of manga, particularly those that were heavy on action. At the time, Bruce Lee was very popular, and I was really into his movies as an elementary and middle schooler. Back then, there was no way to record TV. I had to burn that image of Bruce Lee into my head, and I would try to put that image to paper later. So, for these mangaka, Bruce Lee's movies were what they saw that inspired them to make their own iconic media. Well, after the Fist of the North Star became popular, it in turn continued to inspire others. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is possibly the more well-known product of said inspiration in the West, and the parallels are obvious. In place of the higher-pitched sound, the signature Aura Aura was born. Kind of as a parody, but instead, it grew incredibly popular. And what does this have to do with fighting games? Well, when you put yourself in the context of someone growing up consuming these types of media inspired by past anime and movies, that generation is going to be soaking it all up. And this is the perspective of many fighting game designers and directors who are making the games we're playing now. The timeline is so clear. Here's a clip from an interview with Yoshinori Ono, one of the most influential directors of Street Fighter. Uh, my first step on my Street Fighter journey was just after Street Fighter 2 came out. Yeah. I joined the company and I went straight onto the Super Street Fighter 2 development team. De, ma, really, really, really... And I was able just to continue with the series from Super Street Fighter on to the Alpha series and 3, later going on to 4 and 5. And it's given me such a great chance over my career, not only to work on so many games, but to have opportunities to come out and meet great fans. So he joined the team after Street Fighter 2 came out, which was in 1991. And he's not the only one like this. Other directors like Katsuhiro Harada, the face of Tekken, directed games and created characters or techniques based around the things that they saw growing up. The time of infinite possibilities in movies, TV, and video games gave birth to some of the most iconic things that we know today. Part 
Part 2. Creation Now it's one thing to be inspired, but it's another thing to actually create something unique. The goal of these directors wasn't just to recreate something they saw on TV as kids, they wanted to make something their own that they'd be remembered for, and could light that same fire of inspiration in generations down the line. The trick to this creation was how their inspirations were implemented. For example, Street Fighter was the first fighting game to introduce command-based special moves, which solidified the characters as unique in people's minds. In arcades, you wouldn't have gotten that experience from anywhere else until games started copying what Capcom was already doing. For a while, fighting games were stagnant after the first Street Fighter because of technical limitation, but also somewhat a lack of identity. That's where Street Fighter 2 came along. This game had 8 different characters all with special playstyles, and it redefined what it meant to be a fighting game. What we were seeing were characters clearly inspired by real life people or characters from other media that could still be seen as their own things. Fei Wong was introduced in Super Street Fighter 2, which was released in 1993. He was an obvious Bruce Lee inspired character, but a signature move the Rekka Ken defined an entire type of special move and character archetype, the Rekka. Even Sagat, he's most likely based off of the Muay Thai legend Sagat Pechindi, but across the globe, he's become even more iconic than the legend he's based off of. Tekken took this concept to the next level and attempted to push the boundaries of what video games could look like. There were clear inspirations in what the characters looked like, but their gameplay seemed rooted more in real-life martial arts. There weren't any fireballs, and most characters had a distinguished fighting style that could be traced back to martial arts people actually practice daily. This approach made Tekken insanely unique not only among fighting games, but arcade games in general. Its most modern iteration, Tekken 8, is still pushing those same boundaries, offering something that blurs the lines between reality and video game. With mocap technology, we don't need... No, no, not that mocap. Sorry, with motion capture technology, we as consumers get to enjoy fluid animations that were never before possible. Along with those developments, we got new iterations of the 100 crack fist sound. We've got the Ora Ora. We got the Muda Muda. The Tuba Tuba. And tons of other things in between. And even now, things have cycled so far that decades later, in King of Fighters 15, Kim Kaf Wan has a multi kick rush move that, well, it sounds like this. And if you're wondering why that sounds so perfect, it's because Kim Kaf Wan's super is now voiced by a voice actor who used to do movies for Fist of the North Star. The very thing that inspired these types of moves in fighting games has, after decades, been implemented in the game almost 40 years later, and the cycle feels complete. But it's not quite there just yet. The last part of the cycle is sharing, putting the new creations out to the world. These new creations are obviously products of what came before it, but they still have their own identity if they're made with love and passion. Sharing paves the way for new creators to be inspired, the same way people like Ono and Harada were. Sharing is how we get things like a character based on a character based on Bruce Lee doing action stunts in a movie that was actually shown in theaters. I mean, look at this. It isn't just Bruce Lee. It's Bruce Lee who can throw fire from his hands and float in the air. Which is the obvious next logical step.
It's how we get things like Street Fighter the movie, the game. The influence of Street Fighter was so big that it warranted a movie that was then turned into an arcade game that was met with decent success according to multiple publications. The cycle of people being inspired to make fighting games from action movies led to those same people inspiring others to make action movies based on their own creations. Sharing has led to fighting games permeating all sorts of media and art well beyond what was thought to be possible in the past. Fighting games have made their way to hip hop, to animated children's movies, I was crushing men's skull like sparrow egg between my thighs, and even fashion. And to think all of this came from something else. Even this video I'm making was from an inspiration. My first ever edit of Street Fighter footage was a reference to this exact sound. <laughs> Even this video I'm making right now, it was inspired by all those other YouTube videos that I watch late at night when I have nothing better to do. The cycle of inspiration just keeps turning. Although, truth be told, he threw me a token and jumped me in front of Street Fighter and I turn into Bruce frickin' Lee. They say that there's nothing new under the sun, but that to me is kind of the point. We've been able to create so much from these ideas that were thought decades ago, and we're still putting new spins on them. Fighting games, in my opinion, have lagged behind on this because the biggest innovation was even dreaming up the genre. When Street Fighter 2 was shared with the world, it changed everything, and we're literally still catching up to modernizing some of those ideas. Single player content in major fighting games hasn't changed much aside from cinematic stories being added and novelty modes here and there. But with the current fighting games that are just around the corner, it seems to me like this might be starting to change. Fighting games are starting to learn from each other. There's the developer round tables that have been going on with a lot of the Japanese developers, and with games like Street Fighter VI, we can see them actively borrowing attractive modes and features from other games. Modes and features that should have been commonplace years ago, to be honest. I think this is a great sign for things to come. With Street Fighter specifically, the new director Takayuki Nakayama and producer Kazuhiro Tsuchiya, they've become immensely respected and welcomed by the community. The biggest reason for that is because you can see how passionate they are about the franchise. It's evident just how much love and care is going into what they want to share with the world. What would your victory screen quote be in Street Fighter 2? Mm -hmm. <laughs> The cycle is about to begin again, so until it does, let's make sure we enjoyed these new fighting games for what they are. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.